Okay, today we're going through a 23 SS Rockwood roof. We'll start by going through everything on the outside and then we'll work our way inside on the trailer. At the front here, this is your power jack. You have two buttons on it. One of them, raise and lower it. The other one turns the LED light on here. Then you have your two tanks here. You open the cover, there's two valves. Now if we lift this up, You'll see there's an auto changing regulator here that automatically changes from one tank to the other. When it's on this one, it's operating, it's green. As this one runs out of gas, it will become red. So you know it's switched to the other tank. Well, we got the cover off, it's easier to see. Here's your battery. Then down over here, there's emergency brake wheel switch, which is a cable that will hook to your truck or your car. You also have an additional porch light here on the outside of the unit. Okay. <clears throat> As we come around the outside here, here's your furnace exhaust. It's got a screen on it so the bugs don't go down. Here's where you can add an optional grass grill and table with a gas connection. It adds about $150 if you want to add a gas grill to it. This is your refrigerator vent for service and service panel. You should never be in there. It's something for the service department and a 110 outlet here. Okay. As we proceed around, here are your taillights, spare tire cover, storage compartment in the back. Your sewer hose stores in the bumper right here. This cap comes up. And the sewer hose is inside there. Now, here's your waste valves, okay? <clears throat> you have a black valve here. That's your waste tank. And the one up there is your gray valve. And that's for your gray waste. And well, gray waste would be your shower and your sinks. Black's your toilet, okay? This cap comes off. The hose hooks on there. You open the black, and then open the gray. <clears throat> okay, this is where your power connection is. This is a temporary cord we use so we don't end up with yours. We'll show you your cord inside, but it just goes on, twist and lock. This is your t cable TV and satellite inlet if you end up with those items. Here is your outside shower, hot and cold mixer valve, on and off for the shower head. That closes and locks like so. Again, another outside storage compartment on your slide out here. You see this has got a slide out topper on it. That slide out topper goes out automatically. We don't have to do anything for that to come in and out. As we come around, here's your other important area. This is where you fill your fresh water tank. You undo the cap here. And you stick your hose in. As it fills, when it's full, it'll come out the air breather valve here at the top. Here's where you're, if you're in a campgrounds with full hookups, your garden hose or your city water connection will screw in here. Now this is an antifreeze port to bring antifreeze in when, for winterization. Okay. This is your water heater. The only reason you'd be in here is for service or at winterization time. This is the drain plug for the water heater. Okay. Now, let's go to the most important thing on the outside. We'll show you how the awning operates. All right, to start with, this is your up and down indicator. So we gotta bring it down. We're gonna flip that lever there. Do it one more time. <laughs> you flip this lever down to bring the awning down. You push it up to make it roll up when it's in the down position. Now, you squeeze this transport tab. You loosen this nut here, and you do that on both arms. So we're going to do the same thing on this side. Oh, slower. We're going to undo this nut, squeeze these two tabs here. Now we're ready to pull the awning down. Take this little unit that we use to flip the gear. It has a hook on the other end. You hook this right here so you can do it like this. Always watch out because there's water if it's raining and it's any on you. It comes all the way out like so. Now, that 
that slides up and locks in the position. Release it, you gotta pull this tab down and the arm slides by it, okay? Now that it's out, you turn this knob here to lock it in place, okay? And once you have both ends locked in place like that, you have the adjustment handle here, you lift it straight out, and then you can lift this arm to whatever height you want to set it at. So now to put it up, let it come down, it hits the stop here that sits at. Release this knob here, you pull this tab down, and this arm slides out sits in the base plate here. Do not tighten this knob until the unit's all the way up because this needs to slide up and down. If you tighten it, it will tear the arm, arm off the side of the trailer. Now again, here's your selector. You can see it better here if you look. <coughs> okay, so now you push down to take the pressure off. Same on this end. They're already unlocked, so when you have to do that, then you just let it come all the way down. It's on cables, that'll support a thousand pounds of weight, and they just come down and sit on the side like so. Now as we walk around the inside, a support pole that goes into this little brace on the end and pushes the unit out and it hooks in like so and you're done. Okay now to pull this out you push that unhook it and this brace you have to bring forward set it down and fold the mattress over the top of it okay so that when you tip it up it doesn't it doesn't get stuck so now we just come to the outside and do the reverse <laughs> Here's our power cord that we talked about, 25 feet long. Here's an adapter to go onto it so you can plug it in at home. Here is the bag. It has all the paperwork and owner's book relating to this trailer. Here is a brand new sewer hose for the unit that's 20 feet long. This is your stabilizer jack crank that cranks the stabilizer down. It's a standard three-quarter socket size if you want to get one to put on your drill. This was that awning rod that we used outside to put the awning up and down. This does the power jack if your battery was dead. You take the cap off the center and hooks on and goes there. It also turns the slide out in and out if your battery was dead. Here are your complete two complete sets of keys for the unit. The big square one is your main door. Then this is your bed ends, shower, storage compartment. Two complete sets like that. Then you have two remotes here. One is for the stereo, and then the other one is for the TV. 
those are your two remotes. So if we come over here, TV just came on, and if you're going to look at a local channel, you got to do an auto scan on it, and it's got a button to do that. You know, also, before you do your auto scan, though, you want to make sure you put on your amplifier on, okay, and that little green light will come on. If that doesn't come on, doing an auto scan will do you no good because that amplifies the signal. Ground fold outlet. This is so that if you're playing DVDs, the sound will play through the trailer. So now in the stereo, the remote will turn it on and off. And <clears throat> you have Bluetooth, you have different modes for AM, FM, CD, and then you have A, B, C, which are your zones. A is your front speaker, B is your back speaker, C is your outside speaker. So you can turn any of these off or on. So if you want to listen to music inside and you don't want to wake everybody else up in the campground, shut your outside speakers off. There's your cigarette lighter. Then as we proceed through the trailer, here is your main control panel. Okay, this is main switch that turns all your interior lights off. Porch light. This turns your tank heaters. Oh. Yeah, tank heater, so that's your water heater. Okay, it turns your water heater on to light it on gas. This turns your water pump on. It pressurizes the system if you're using onboard water. And then there's this button here that does your slide out. It brings your slide in and out. These items are 12 volt and will run off the battery on the system. You do have to be plugged into 110 power for the outlets to activate, the air conditioner to work, and for the microwave to work. They will not run off the battery, but everything else in the trailer will operate off the battery system. A lot of the lights have independent, independent switches, like these are reading lights that you know rotate around and adjust for reading, so they have independent switches. As do the ones on the main switch, you can also turn them on there, it turns them all on, or you got individual switches so you can shut them off. These are our air conditioning ducts in the ceiling. You can close them, turn them, rotate them to any direction you want, okay? Uh, this is your TV antenna. You see there's two arrows here. They must be lined up when you're in <coughs> transit. So you turn this up. And it stops then if you want to get a better signal you can rotate this around and the picture clarity will usually increase because it's a giant bat wing returning crosswise to its station but the transport you must put those two arrows back together and then turn it down sink here is pretty straightforward you got two Drain caps here to fill them in. The drain into that gray water tank we talked about. Standard microwave, turntable in here. I would recommend maybe putting that plate somewhere so it doesn't bounce off during the transfer and crack. As we come across here now, there's a light here, an exhaust fan. The exhaust fan goes through a filter or you can open two little fingers on the outside and it will exhaust out. You must close those before you transport or it will rip the fan cover off. Case lifts up, folds. I think we gotta adjust this a little bit. There, okay. So here is your basic stove. Okay, this is your stove. You have a light position. You have to light it at the light position with a match, and then you can turn it to whatever setting you want. This is a higher output burner in the center, so if you're trying to boil water in that, it's faster. Now for the oven, there is a pilot light you must light. You have to turn it here, and you'll see the pilot lights right here. You have to light that with a match. While you push this in, you hold it for 30 seconds. Pilot light stays going, you can go to any of the settings. Come back to pilot. You won't have to relight it. If you go to off, you will have to relight it. 
okay <clears throat> now on this you must lift up and bring it forward otherwise you will bend the hinge on it just a storage spot here and then as we go over here here's your uh, refrigerator you turn it on it goes all automatic which will be gas I mean 110 gas 12 volt if you want to put it on just gas you have to put on a gas setting <coughs> and you can see then if it doesn't light on gas the check light will come on in a yellow color you have to probably turn the tanks on or restart it again now you just got your basics here and there is a thermostat here so the higher you make it the colder it gets in there the lower you make it the less cold it is this is just more storage uh, this is a table that will hook on the outside of the trailer on that track and then as you come around here this is the thermostat for the furnace and the air conditioner okay you just got to put it in proper setting like for heat then you set it on your temperature you want okay you shut your heat off and then you go air conditioning to your different settings and so you can go three speed settings if you do it here this locks it on constantly if you go over here it's on auto so like right now there's no on auto it doesn't need to be on high because of the temperature so the fan shuts off but if you put it over here the fan stays on so and then we'll just shut everything off here's another spot where you can hook up an additional you know, tv off the antenna now as we go into the bathroom Okay, this is pretty straightforward, just hot and cold water, right like that, soap, toothbrush. This is your shower, so you have hot and cold water here, and then the shower head here turns your, power, your water on and off, off the shower head. So once you get to temperature set, you can shut it off and then turn it back on, and it's already pre-mixed to your temperature. Now, this is your toilet this one's got the better foot flush on it you just push it down like that and it flushes washes everything down in the black water tank you do need to use chemical in the black water tank and it's also important to use a biodegradable uh, toilet paper with the chemical so it turns to a liquid and exhaust now there is a switch right here on the wall okay this switch turns the light on and it also powers the fan in the ceiling here. Okay, open your fan. And it has three span, uh, fan speed settings. That's your highest and you're all set. You can come back to zero or any of those. There's two things here. You push this in, that disconnects the battery power to the trailer. So if you're storing it, push that in. If you are camping, you want to have this pulled out because when the trailer, it'll activate everything off the battery or if you're plugged into power, it will charge the battery on the system also. This must be pulled out if you're plugged in to charge it. Just push that in. These are all your 110 circuit breakers. These are all your 12 volt fuses. Each one's labeled accordingly. And that's pretty much it.